Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the M Word. It is Thursday and it's episode 16. Um, today, we're going to be looking at synchronizing Autodesk Vault and, well, I guess we're not synchronizing Vault, that'd be silly. We're synchronizing data from Autodesk Vault into the construction cloud automatically using the Vault job processor, um, which is kind of covering both manufacturing and construction. Uh, so it's a nice cross-discipline session today. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. For those of you that are new, welcome. Make sure that you follow us on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, so on and so forth for all the latest and greatest. Um, and for those of you that are not new, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Um, and it's always good to have you on board for these sessions. Um, remember to give us a like, give us a subscribe, leave us some commentary, tell us what you want to see during these sessions and, and make them in, as interactive as you want them to be. Um, and, and we're more than happy to, to take those comments on board, uh, take that feedback on board and, and push forward with them. So, um, yeah, it's great to have you. Um, lovely day outside today. It's, uh, I mean, that depends on what time of year you're watching this, of course, if you're not watching it live. But today, here and now, on the 14th of July, it's a beautiful day outside. It's lovely and hot. Um, I guess uh, I wish I was outside in a nice known flake, to be honest. But uh, I'm in my small recording studio in the Man Machine Towers and... Uh, doing this session for you guys this afternoon, but um, fear not, we have an exciting session on the way. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, stop talking gibberish and shrink myself to the corner, Whee, there we go, um, and share my screen. <clears throat> so um, we've done a few, uh, a few sessions recently um, with regards to the construction cloud. We did a demo a couple of weeks back, uh, episode 12, 13, something like that. Um, on Autodesk Docs and explaining what Docs can do to manage um, your, uh, your data in the construction space. Um, and also in one of the earlier episodes, we looked a little bit at um, Autodesk Vault and not necessarily from a demonstration perspective, but certainly um, we used a bit of Vault Gateway, I think, from memory among some other things. So we've talked about both systems, um, but Construction Cloud and, and Autodesk Docs sits in the construction space. So typically it's data management and version control um, for your construction project on Revit, for example, and a common data environment for that, uh, that particular piece of software or application. Whereas Autodesk Vault is very much PDM, product data management, um, for the manufacturing side. So it manages your AutoCAD data, it manages your um, inventor data and, and really controls that from a version and revision control perspective really nicely, which is great. So we've got these two systems, but what we're actually seeing more and more at Man and Machine in the UK is um, fabricators that need to collaborate with the construction space, um, or indeed someone from the construction space that needs to share something with and collaborate with the fabrication space. Um, whether it's, you know, we're, we're modeling a facade on the side of the building, and therefore we want to receive the Revit format um, in a controlled and shared environment, um, or whether it's, you know, I'm a manufacturer of, uh, of facets and um, I want to send one of those facets uh, across to Revit but share it in a controlled environment. Um, and using the tools that we have available to us inside of Autodesk Vault, um, we can actually make that process really straightforward if you're a Vault user um, and also make that process really straightforward if you are a construction cloud user. So um, we're going to spend the next sort of 20 minutes just going through this is how you set it up, this is what it does. Um, and talking about some if buts and maybes, maybe not quite as uh, exciting as last week's topic. Uh, I guess data management can be a bit dry. Um, maybe I'll try and G things up a little bit, but um, stick with me in spirit and um, we'll see how we get on. Um, so I've just opened up Autodesk Docs uh, in my browser here. I'm just running my, uh, my, my dummy project, um, which is really just a dumping ground for all of my stuff. Sorry, Gareth, if you're watching. I know how you like to keep our construction cloud profiles uh, and projects nice and clean, but um, this isn't clean. Just look the other way, it's fine. Um, but this is where I'm just gonna use this project today to just share how we can do certain things. Um, so apologies, it doesn't look neat, it doesn't look nice, it doesn't look effective, but the functionality that hopefully you'll see, you'll go, okay, wow, that's really useful. So let's imagine that this is a really nice, um, structured, ISO compliant, um, a CDE, which we're then going to use to synchronize across to Autodesk Vault. Um, so what we have in here, and I'm going to do everything from scratch, such is the nature um, of this. So actually, with that in mind, I'm going to delete this folder that I've got here. Um, so what we're going to do is completely from scratch, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a new subfolder. 
Um, so let's call this uh, YouTube Live Sync. So we've got a brand new folder that's never existed before um, on my construction cloud. Now, if I wanted to, I could control the permissions on there, so who can, can see it, who can't see it. I'm just gonna leave it as completely open for the purpose of today. Um, it would just make my life a little bit easier from a demonstration perspective. Um, but um, yeah, this is um, just gonna show you how to set the process up from scratch, essentially. Um, so I've got this YouTube live sync. And then all we're gonna do in the background is I'm just gonna find a Revit file to upload to that location. Um, so I'm going to go into Revit and I'm just going to go and open up the, the sample project and just stick that in there. Um, I'm going to do it properly, so I'm going to tell it to save as a cloud model inside of Revit. Um, so I guess I could have done this bit up front, but again, I really like to be transparent with you guys. Unprepared maybe? What's and all? Nah, no, transparent. I want to be transparent and really show you how this works and, and just try and keep this at bare bones. A lot of this stuff um, it's overcomplicated. It really doesn't need to be. It's, it's so straightforward to, to work with. So that's kind of what I want to push, push across. So um, I'm just uh, going to use Revit. I'm just going to open one of the sample files. I know that you've all seen them umpteen times before and uh, they're not the nicest. I need to make sure I open up my desktop connector before I do so. Um, and what I'm going to do is use uh, one of the smaller ones. Let's just use the simple, where have you gone? RAC, there we go, sample project. Um, so I'm just gonna use this one because it's fairly small, it's lightweight, the upload and download time will be um, uh, fairly small. Um, and then we're gonna save it as a cloud model. It doesn't really matter too much with regards to my publish settings or anything like that for this particular example. Um, so the publish settings I'm just gonna choose is, uh, do you know what, all of these views, happy days. So let's save and close. And let's go to File, Save As, Cloud Model. Give it a second to kick into action. Take a second to take a nice refreshing glug of my lemonade. Uh, and what we're gonna do is point that towards that uh, construction cloud project that I've just shown you on the browser. Let's go into my project files. Let's go into that YouTube live sync. I'm just gonna save it to the root of the folder. I'm not gonna do anything more complicated than that. I'm gonna let it save to the cloud, and then I'm gonna go into um, publish and just let it publish to the cloud, just because that's typically what you would do um, if you were actually saving this to the cloud in reality. So um, whilst my ACC project is, uh, is messy, I'm gonna do it properly. So uh, I'm gonna try and uh, at least show the workflow <laughs> unmessy rather than have a messy ACC and, uh, and a messy workflow. So um, let's just give it a couple of save, seconds to save. And whilst it's doing so, um, again, these sessions really are there to, to just get you guys to join us for a virtual coffee break or lemonade break um, or whatever it might be, break, pancake, syrup, who knows. Um, but we're going to um, use these sessions to just try and help you with tips and tricks and workflows like this. Please comment and let us know what you want to see. Um, so that's uploaded. Let's close that down. Uh, let's go onto our Autodesk docs and just make sure it's published. So as well as uploading, we want it to publish the views and, and make sure it's as accessible as, uh, as we need it to be. Uh, so let's find my ACC project, go into project files here, go into sync and make sure that, yeah, great, we're up to date, latest published, happy days. So I've got a file that now exists on the construction cloud. Yes, it's gonna process for a minute there whilst it's uh, just finishing off, but that file now exists on the construction cloud. And what we're gonna do is we're going to imagine that we're going to take off our BIM hat and we're going to put on our manufacturing hat. Um, and let's say that maybe we're um, a specialist designer as part of a BIM workflow. Um, and what we need to do is take the architect's um, facade design or, uh, or, or casework design or whatever it might be. And we actually need to now make that a reality. So we need to go into Inventor um, and then inside of Inventor, we need to model that component up and, and work on it. Um, and as you know, because I've been preaching it for months now, if not years, Inventor and Revit work fantastically well together. Um, but sometimes getting that data from cloud onto Inventor or from architect onto Inventor can be quite painful. Um, and when you bring that model into Inventor, Inventor kind of wants to make a link to it. If you're a Vault user, it wants to vault that file and control that file, which is fine, but 
you shouldn't need to work in that kind of controlled way without collaboration from an outside space. So we have a model from Mr. Architect, um, and we want to share that with Mr. Fabricator, or indeed Mrs. Fabricator. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to come over here and um, minimize this. And I'm going to log into Vault. I'm logging in as the administrator so that I have rights to do specific stuff. Um, and what we're going to do is um, go into my designs and I'm just going to create a brand new folder. Um, now, I'm using data standard for this, which is a fantastic bit of kit data standard. Um, I'm just going to go and put this together really quickly. So let's say the client is a YouTube and the project is live and the project number is uh, 0003. Great. Hit OK. Um, I'm using data standard, so it's going to make a really nice folder structure based on that client and project name over here. It's going to attach the client details to it over here. It's created a subfolder structure for me um, to my requirements, as well as subfolders of subfolders, so on and so forth. Great, I have something that I want. I'm purposely going to add um, a separate file underneath there, so I'm going to say, do you know what, I want a general folder, um, I want a custom naming convention, and I want to have a 06 uh, collaboration. Collaboration. And then what we're going to do is pull um, some information um, into that from the construction cloud. Okay, so um, oh, my OCD is not going to like that. It needs to be capitals. I'm going to rename it. Let's see if Vault's better than Windows. Collaboration. There we go. Um, so we've got our little file here. And I want to create a synchronization between construction cloud, Autodesk Docs, and Vault and have them talking to each other. So in Vault, I'm going to go to Tools, I'm going to go to Administration, and go to Vault Settings. This is Vault Pro functionality only, doesn't work with BASIC, so you've got to have a license of Vault Pro, um, and you're going to need to run through the job processor. It doesn't matter if it's an off-the-shelf job processor, Cool Orange job processor, or some other job processor out there, um, it works with all of them. But you need to have Vault Professional, um, and then you'll obviously need access to whatever it is that you're trying to synchronize to. So we're going to imagine that the architects shared with me this file, and they've given me access to the Construction Cloud. But being a Vault, Vault user, I don't want to have to go into Construction Cloud, find the file, download it, link it with Inventor. That will force me to work with it through Vault, and I've got to upload that. It's painful. I want to automate that. I want to make that process easier. So I can go to the Collaborate tab within my settings and go to my Project Sync Management and Configure. I've got one that I created earlier in here, which is hopefully going to open up any second. There we go. Or not, as the case might be. So a nice blank interface, and we're going to create one and set one up. So what we can do is create a new cloud drive mapping. Uh, now, this uses the Autodesk desktop connector. So you've got to make sure that you've got this desktop connector installed on your job processor machine. Um, and this is how it would work to synchronize the files. But what we do is we give it a name. So let's call this uh, YouTube Live Demo. Doesn't matter what it's called, it just gives it a name. Maybe that's going to be a project name is probably a more specific thing to put in there, but um, I'm just going to keep this nice and straightforward. We choose a Vault folder. So this would be project specific. You're going to create as many of these as you need to per project, or one per project, or one per folder, whatever it is you're after. So I'm going to go into Designs, go into uh, project number three for Live, and go into my collaboration folder and hit OK. This is the Vault folder I want to synchronize. The Cloud Drive folder I want to link this to is inside of um, Docs. You notice that I've got Fusion 360 as well, so we can link to Docs and we can link to a Fusion team as well. So we can start sharing data from Vault to uh, Fusion, uh, Fusion Manage, Fusion Team, um, Autodesk Docs, Autodesk Build, so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going to go and come across into Autodesk Docs. It's going to give me all of my projects. It seems a little bit slow, but um, I'm going to stick with it. Let's go to Man and Machine. Uh, let's go to Robin's ACC, Project Files, and choose my... I didn't call it Vault Sync, did I? Okay, cancel. Let's make sure that we've got a refresh on the Construction Cloud um, site on my desktop connector. Because I've only just started it, um, it's probably still refreshing, so I'm going to go and force a refresh by going on to here and just hitting refresh. Is there already? Great. Um, so YouTube Live Sync, fantastic. Let's go and try that again. Cloud Drive, Autotest Docs, Man and Machine, Robin's ACC, Project Files, YouTube Live Sync. Okay. 
We could choose a subfolder or whatever, but I'm just going folder to folder. Again, the likelihood is you might have a project to project sync or likely a subfolder to subfolder sync within that project and several of them. Once you've chosen your locations, we allow the drive mapping. Uh, we allow or not a manual sync. And then we decide how we want to work with release files. Do you only want to throw files up based on a release bias or something like that? I'm not fussed about any of that for now. So I'm going to leave those as default. And then what we do is we create a, um, a sync folder schedule. I'm not going to turn this on, but I'm going to show you how it works. So I can say, okay, my schedule, again, is going to be the entire folder, right? So let's go into here and choose the collaboration folder. We can choose whether that schedule is pushing files or pulling files from the construction cloud or a bi-directional synchronization between the two. Just be careful. Remember that we're in Vault. We're working on a controlled environment. If, if you're doing a bi-directional sync and someone has permissions to edit it on the construction cloud and does, it will pull that file back in if you tell it to. So just be wary and just be careful. Come and talk to us before setting this up and, and we'll talk you through the best practice steps. In my case, I'm going to say bi-directional sync, apply it to the subfolders as well, and hit OK. Once you've defined that sync exists, we can choose how it's going to sync. In other words, we can give it a schedule. I don't want this to have a schedule because I don't want it to kick on you know, twice a day, three times a day. But we can say, go and do it overnight. Go and synchronize at 1 o'clock in the morning, or synchronize at 8 a.m. and then again at 6 p.m., or three times a day or every two hours. We can really control when we want this to synchronize, which is great. So we have that level of collaboration control. If it's once every two weeks, we'll just do it manually and manually do it once every two weeks, or we can tell it to do it over a certain time on a day. The most exciting thing for me, which is a bit sad, I always get excited about these things. I'm a geek, I'm sorry, I apologize. Actually, no, I don't apologize for it. I'm a geek, I love it. Um, this filter area, allows me to choose any filter criteria for that upload or download synchronization. So it might be that, do you know what? All I care about is that main RVT file. I could say the name equals this, or the file extension is RVT. Or if you're pushing up to the construction cloud, only send PDFs that are released. Only send IAMs and IPTs that are released. We can control these filters in the same way that we can do customized searches, um, and categorization inside of Vault. So you've got all of that same power there. Use it to control what you want up and what you want down. But just remember about your, um, your permissions in your life cycle. You need to be careful with those. As I say, I'm not gonna set up a, a sync here. I'm gonna do it manually. So let's just uh, go ahead and hit OK and get that set up. That then exists here within my system. If I close that now and close my settings, I'm just going to go and open um, Cool Orange Power Jobs, which is the job processor I'm using for this particular um, setup that I've got here. You've seen me use Power Jobs hundreds of times before. I really like it. I'm passionate about customization and ease of customization. Whilst the job processor you get out of the box with Vault is, is okay because it will allow you to run custom jobs. There's only a handful of jobs that you can actually run. With Cool Orange Power Jobs processor, can write your own jobs in PowerShell. In other words, within reason, you can get it to do whatever you want it to do, which for me, that's what Vault's all about. It's, it's taking mundane tasks and making them automated and making your life easier, and it's cheap. So um, that's the only reason I'm opening it, because that's what I'm set up to do. But this will work out of the box with standard job processor as well. So once that's up, I'm gonna get something into here um, so let's right click in Vault and say new standard file. Again, I'm going to use um, data standard and we're going to say um, it's an inventor file. We'll just do a standard IPT for the purpose of this um, IPT. Uh, pull the properties from uh, the main level. Again, that's just data standard doing what data standard does best, driving standardization um, and hit OK. Maybe what we will do for the purpose of this is just put something on there so we can view it when it comes to synchronize. So let's definitely open it and check it out. Let's go for a quick workflow. Um, we've got plenty of time on this session today and it gives me another chance to have a nice cool refreshing drink. Um, you'd almost think I'm doing advertisement, wouldn't you? But I'm not, I'm just thirsty. Um, so once that opens up, I'm just gonna create a, um, a simple face, maybe put a flange on it, or maybe do a simple contour flange, something like that. Um, so let's let it open up. Let's... <coughs> wait for it to drop its lunch 
Mm, no. Let's wait for it to open up. Uh, and let's come in, let's just do a contour flange. Um, yes, I want to check into Vault. Uh, I'm checked in as the, uh, logged in, sorry, as the administrator. So let's make sure I log in through Vault as the same user. And then let's uh, start a sketch on that face. And let's do a sit. Simple profile, uh, line, click. Uh, let's come up uh, 50 millimeters up here and let's go in that direction. Uh, 25 mil by 150, great. Lovely, okay that, end that. And let's do a, it's not sheet metal. Oh, that's sheet metal. Fail, uh, convert that sheet metal contour flange. Let's grab that uh, and let's pull it. I don't know, uh, half a meter, lovely. There's my file, super. Let's save it. Let's uh, check that back into the vault. Give it a, a comment, initial check in, lovely. Uh, and I'm just doing that to have something to view when we get to the construction cloud. I probably should have prepared this and had something all singing, all dancing and lovely. But if you want a specific demo, just come and talk to us and we'll give you that um, demo candy and all of that lovely stuff. But um, for today, you're watching this because you want to learn how it works, so let's just show you how it works. So inside of Vault now, let's uh, refresh. We have a file, great, there it is. Beautiful now Forge viewer inside of, uh, inside of Vault, love it. 2023 Vault works really well, by the way. Um, but that file now exists. So let's show you a push and let's show you a pull. So I can say from my collaboration folder now, um, I've got download from Cloud Drive on the folder. I've also, on a file, got upload to Cloud Drive. So let's select my file and say upload to Cloud Drive. Again, I'm doing this manually because I enabled manual sync. You'd probably have this on a schedule because you don't want to wait for that human error. You want to do it automatically when it's released or when the lifecycle state goes to waiting for architect's approval or whatever it might be, it does it. So we can trigger this into a lifecycle, which is hugely important. If you're using power events from Cool Orange, you could trigger it at any time on any event during Vault, but that's another story for another day. Let's use this synchronization I've set up and hit upload. If we wait for a second and go and have a look at our job processor, 4K screen, so it's absolutely tiny, but that says autodesk.vault.sync.manual upload, and you can see that it's been added to my queue. That'll sit there for a couple of seconds or minutes, depending on the size of the file, and that will upload it to the cloud drive. Again, it's using the desktop connector. Make sure you keep that up to date. Um, that's up to date quite regularly for security purposes and functionality purposes to uh, tie in with the feature updates and so on and so forth to the construction cloud. Keep that up to date, keep Vault up to date and you'll be laughing. With a bit of luck, without even having to refresh the page, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have now inside of the construction cloud, my MAM003, that's my project number and 0004 because that's the file number in this particular project um, and we can see that exists and it now is accessible inside of construction cloud to be able to do with it whatever you wish if I'd synchronized um, that from inventor and it was uh, something for the architect to put into their file they could then download it and, and put it into their file imagine the wider BIM interoperability workflow here we create something in inventor we use BIM exchange to publish an IFC export an RVT or save uh, um, an RFA file. We can use that, put them into Vault, package them up nicely, um, control them from a revision perspective in Vault, and then just get it to push them automatically to the construction cloud so the wider design and collaborative team can work on them. And here is the file inside of construction cloud to do whatever it is that you want to do on it inside of there. The other way, it works the same. So to do that design, I might have needed the architectural file to work on first. So absolutely doable. All you'd need to do is be inside a vault and either have your schedule set up or you click your folder, you say download from Cloud Drive, you choose your location, you cross your fingers, cross your toes, hold your thumbs, choose what you want into download, which is my RVT file, hit download, Again, that's gonna go and fire a job to the job processor. So if I just wait for a second, the job comes on, we get a little progress bar. If it's a massive Revit file and 
this is a tiny sample, guys. So, you know, typically a Revit file is going to be hundreds of meg. Um, if it's a big file, it might be 500 meg, it might be half a gig. Um, so they're going to be pretty, pretty large. So you might be waiting a little time to do that download, but it's not on your client machine. It's going to do that on the server or on a, not on the server. Don't install job processor on your server. It's going to do it on the job processor machine. It's just going to appear in your vault wonderfully. Again, synchronize, synchronize that with the power of cool orange. It could ping you a Teams message or a, a notification via Slack or whatever it might be um, when that's ready, which is it's just game changing. Refresh my folder, and there is my Revit file existing inside of Vault. What does that mean? Well, it means, quite frankly, that if I say um, go into Inventor, and I say create a uh, let's create a new assembly. Let's create a new assembly. Inside of Inventor, I can say that I want to place from Vault. I can say I want to place from Vault. I can browse to that file that now exists inside of the Vault Designs, Live, Collaborate, Revit Files. There we go, Revit Project, that one, go. And it will just run through the standard Revit interoperability, which we'll save that for another day because it's, um, I think they already did it. One of the early sessions, can't remember the number. Um, but go and look on our YouTube, go and check out our other videos because there's great stuff on there. This will just run now as if this is a Revit file I've been sent on WeTransfer or on email, but it's controlled. It's now sat synchronizing with the construction cloud, controllable in my vault, and I can use it in any old way that I want to. Let's bring in the whole model and, and watch, uh, watch this come in um, while we finish up. So what we have shown today in, in 26 minutes I've been blabbering on um, is we have a live synchronization bi-directional either manual or on our schedule between Autodesk Docs on the Autodesk Construction Cloud um, and Autodesk Inventor using Autodesk Vault. Um, what that means is that we have a better level of control. Yes there's ability inside of Inventor 23 to use design exchange files which are again they're driven from Docs. Check out the earlier video on our YouTube channel for those. Um, but this is going into Vault. That means that that file is accessible within Vault, controllable within Vault. We can then send files to and forth and backwards and forwards um, without having to worry about logging into that other system and uploading to that other system. It's extremely powerful and actually, hopefully it's spoken for itself. It works pretty well. Um, you know, I know a lot of you were very frustrated when, let's just place grounded at origin, were very frustrated with the newer releases of Inventor that when you link a Revit file and you're using Vault, it will force you to check the Revit file into Vault. This is still doing that, but the Revit file is in Vault because it's been synchronized from the construction cloud. Hugely beneficial and really links in nicely with the workflow. Um, and that, for me, for once means a, I'm on time, which is great because it's swelteringly hot in this room. Um, B, shows the functionality really nicely, so I hope that's been really useful. Um, there won't be a YouTube Live next week, certainly not from me because I'm, uh, I'm off on holiday. So um, apologies for that, but I'll come back the week after and I will endeavor to do something really cool and really special. Drop us a comment, drop us a like, give us a subscribe, let us know what you want to see. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the weather this weekend. Stay hydrated. It's going to be super hot. Um, I don't care. I'm loving it. Get me in the pool and uh, yeah, happy days. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. See you later. Goodbye.